Thank you very much. Roll call, please. Councilmember Cole? Here. Councilmember Schweer? Here. Councilmember Wong? Here. Councilmember Nordby? Here. Mayor Mongi? Here. I get a motion to adopt the agenda, please. So moved, Your Honor. So moved, Councilmember Norby. Second. Second, Councilmember Wong. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we have Two presentations tonight. The first one up was a recognition and appreciation of outgoing Park and Rec member uh, Arthur R. D. Alvarez Jr., but unfortunately he is feeling under the weather this evening, so um, we're going to put that off. Uh, next one up is the Community Development Annual Report, and we'll turn that over to Community Development Director Brandy Howe. Hi, everybody. Hey, Welcome, Brandy. Well, a lot of the presentations um, related to our department have already occurred, so this will be fairly short. Um, as, you, as you probably realize, we are a small but relatively hardworking department. There is three staff, including three administrative assistants, Chris Journey, Sarah Lang, and Jill Officer, and myself as the director. And our department is responsible for community services, parks and recreation, economic development, planning and zoning, and permitting and licensing. Uh, customer service for our department includes the monitoring of seven phone lines, five email accounts, and the walk-up customers as well. The day-to-day -day duties of our staff include responding to resident inquiries, providing notary services, uh, completing data requests, and providing administrative support for other departments, particularly our public works department team. Um, our Parks and Recreation Department works collaboratively, collaboratively with Public Works to support our city's parks and athletic fields. Uh, specifically, uh, park-related issues that our staff worked on in 2023 include working with the Park and Recreation Commission and City Council on an update to the park rental policy and the facility rental rates. Uh, similarly, we worked with Council on a ball field rental policy earlier this year to address rates specifically and created a policy for Southwood Nature Preserve. In addition, staff submitted an application for a DNR grant for housing park improvements, and that was awarded $494,000. And finally, we started a comprehensive planning effort for the city's park and open space system. Our planning and zoning division services include comp plan implementation, zoning administration, a development plan review, grant writing, and administra administration, and conducting long-range planning for the city. In 2023, our department transitioned from consultant-led planning services to providing planning and zoning administration in-house. And in 2023, our staff issued 111 zoning permits, including site plan reviews for new development projects. Major projects in 2023 included the Lilly redevelopment, North High School expansion, and the Taco Bell on McKnight. Staff has also developed several informational brochures for residents to help them out with simple projects um, related to fences, driveways, and accessory buildings. Uh, the department also works to promote economic development interests in the city. Um, in 2023, our staff created a checklist to inform new businesses of the required permits and licensing and any other requirements may, they may need to open a city, I'm sorry, to open a business in the city. And in 2023, we saw 12 new businesses opened um, including Hangtime board shop, board shop, the Blue Nile Restaurant, the Candy Shop, and Bauer Design Build. And we're also working on updating the economic development portion of our website to improve the ease of access for new businesses and developers. Um, community development staff also manage the city's participation in several sustainability-focused initiatives, which include the Minnesota Green Step Cities, uh, Minnesota B3 Benchmarking, uh, the citywide cleanup and shredding event, our SCORE grant, and we've also assisted um, communicating the new Ramsey County Food Scraps program. And finally, our staff are also the support for the city commissions with meeting agendas, um, agenda prep, meeting minutes, and special projects. And as I mentioned, the commission chairs provided their annual report separately in January. 
So that is a short presentation. If you have any questions about our department, I'd be happy to happy to take those. Brandy, um, I'd like to say thank you for all you do. I get the added pleasure of seeing you and Chris's work in the Planning Commission with all your support staff, and you are just wonderful, and I can't thank you enough. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you for all your work. You um, definitely have a vast <laughs> um, scope of work, and um, uh, yeah, you definitely take on a lot of that technical piece, too, and um, I really appreciate your... Um, your um, a, uh, approach to getting grants and things like that. So um, thank you for everything. Thank you. I have a strong support staff as well. I did all that. Thanks for finding money. <laughs> Any more opportunities, I will definitely work on applying for those grants. Thanks for holding us together. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Next up for the consent agenda, we have uh, January 16th, 2024 workshop minutes. Uh, item B, January 16th, 2024 regular meeting minutes. Item C, general claims of $4,625,783.39. Item D, HRA claims of $15,953. Item E is a temporary on sale liquor license and charitable gambling application to Church of St. Peter annual school gala event and on Saturday, April 20th of 2024. <clears throat> Item F, consideration of an ordinance to amend the 2024 municipal fee and utility rate schedule. Item G, purchase 96 uh, electric meters for the Lilly redevelopment project and the apartments that are there. Item H, League of Minnesota City's uh, municipal tort liability waiver. Item I, project snowy purchase agreement. Item J, resolution approving appointments to the Arts and Culture Commission. Item K, resolution approving a special event permit, History, History Cruisers Car Show 2024. Item L, update purchase of the 2024 Mack plow truck. Item M, well sealing program authorization. And item N, considering approving joint powers agreement and authorize entering into a partnership with the Minnesota, the state of Minnesota BCA Violent Crime Reduction Unit. Anybody have anything they'd like to pull? I'd like to pull item L. L? Okay. Anything besides item L? If not, I'd like to ask for a motion for the rest of them, excluding hell. So moved. So moved. Council Member Cole. Second. Second. Council Member Wong. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Open to the public. We have John Schmall. Welcome. A um, couple of items. Uh, first of all, was a situation that I've always come up here in the last uh, four or three, four or five meetings, saying Lexus Nexus, and uh, was uh, intent on doing the same thing, except for the fact that I was informed by uh, another resident that on the website, actually, where it said it's available. It's now been changed to it's not available and that you're working on it. So it's only taken, you know, two months uh, or plus in order to get to this point. But you would have thought that in this situation that someone who brought up the problem with this LexisNexis would have uh, received notification, an email or something that said we're working on it because for prior to that I've received zero so, um, and I had to get information from another resident to say, you realize that they have changed, and it was just today, an hour before I came here, you realize that the website says something about actually dealing with the problem. So, uh, frustrated, a little ticked off, to say the least. Um, again, uh, 
I brought up, I gave you, Mayor, a copy of the uh, proposed fee schedule that had to do with water and that we were charging uh, something like uh, $3 a gallon when it was really per thousand gallons. I don't know what you did with that thing I gave you, probably were filed it immediately, but uh, it has been corrected. It's oh. now got the correct information. It was taken care of then, yeah. so it wasn't and filed I received a thank you for doing that, too. Uh-huh, yes. Anyway, have a nice day. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thank you. All right. One second. Move on to city business action Thank items. Um, item A and B, uh, budget amendments for the fiscal year 2023 budgets and 2020 7th Street Reconstruction Project MSA reallocations. Both these will be covered by Mr. Wink, our finance director. Welcome, Dan. Thank Good you, Dan. Evening, Mayor and council members. Um, these two items are really cleanup items. Um, the first one being um, it's a budget adjustment, uh, budget amendments for uh, the fiscal year 2023. What it's doing is making sure that we have authorized by the city council uh, the appropriate amount of expenditures to cover what we've gotten to the, the budgets. Um, and the significance um, of this, all of the expenditures have been approved by city council. Um, this is just kind of writing the ship in, in, in certain ways because it is something that our auditors will go through um, and make sure that we're in legal compliance. Um, there's um, four of them that actually have an impact on fund balance, so I'll kind of focus on those. Um, uh, the general fund, street maintenance, solid waste, fiber optics um, do not have any additional impact on fund balance from what was approved in the original budget. Um, the uh, insurance fund does, um, and that's a, uh, a significant change. Um, it's reducing the impact on the fund balance by $112,000, um, and that is due to a significant increase in our workman's compensation. Um, and at the time that we prepared the budget, we did not know of this um, increase. We didn't know it till later part of the year. Um, uh, and so that's what uh, is attributing to that. Um, in the equipment fund, um, it's uh, actually going positive by about $13,000. Um, and then in the building maintenance, um, it has a, an additional negative in, impact of about $11,000 from what we had approved in the original budget. Um, and then there's the HRA fund, um, and that one is uh, showing that it's gonna have about a $425,000 decrease in the fund balance. And it's really due to that we haven't sold um, the one house that's complete, it's on the market. Um, and so as soon as that is sold, that all gets cleared up. But in, from a budgetary standpoint, we included estimated revenue, which we're now decreasing. Um, and we've uh, you know, started uh, on the expenditure side, we started the next house um, that wasn't um, into the budget. So those are the, the, the budget amendments that are there. Um, all of our funds will, uh, Right now, we're in preliminary numbers. There's still some journal entries for financial statement purposes that we're still working on because uh, our financial statements won't be totally complete until um, April. Um, but um, we got some good news. Um, and so I kind of want to share that good news um, because there's, um, it's actually a very, very nice story. So of these, of these funds, obviously, the, the fiber optics has had a a negative cash balance, and we have all, all are aware of that one. Um, but all of the other funds, even with any of these changes, still have a, a very um, good, healthy um, fund balance. But here's the really good news that I really want to share. Some of the, some of the, the, the pieces, and, and, and first of all, I want to start out by thanking City Council. I want to thank you for your support that you've given me as your finance director in leading um, the city's financial affairs. And I want to kind of report uh, how we've done in 2023 that I think are pretty remarkable. Um, when I started, uh, we had a fund balance policy that we had 35% for the general fund. 
um, city council, um, based upon my recommendation, we moved that to have a minimum of 40% to move up to 50%. Um, we're sitting pretty comfortable that we are going to be at 50% at the end of this year. Um, so in three years, we have achieved that. Um, there will be an item coming up in March, uh, our first uh, city council meeting in March, um, that unfortunately how the contract was written for building inspections um, that um, and we switched to a different company a different vendor um, that uh, they were done at December 31st um, how they were paid were was uh, in the contract was written that they would receive any revenue um, that was given um, not necessarily that the services were provided and completed um, so unfortunately, if the, as the crossover to a new vendor, there are a number, a significant number of, of uh, um, permits that are still open. Um, so we have met with our current vendor um, and we'll be bringing an item in March that will be written as a T&M not to exceed amount, but that amount is $145,000. Um, that will be coming out of the fund balance. But even with that, we still should be able to make, to be right around that 50% fund balance. That's a remarkable um, uh, ta uh, feat that, that the city has accomplished. And that 50% um, that I had recommended is really something that comes from the state auditors. And if you think about the, the general fund, the general fund's primary revenue is taxes. And our first tax settlement doesn't come in until the end of, uh, end of June, early July. Um, so that's really the reason that we need to be at that 50%. On top of it, it's just going to help us out when we go out for bonds. Um, it's going to help with our rating, keeping it definitely at the AA. And who knows? We can keep our fingers crossed and maybe we can get ticked up a little bit and help us with our interest rates on that. Um, because in the upcoming uh, year in 2020, uh, towards the end of 2024 and 2025, we'll be preparing to go out for our bond, uh, bond issuance on um, some reconstruction projects. But kind of want to tell you how timing of things change. Uh, we should actually see good fund balances and increases in our fund balances even in our enterprise funds. Um, a, a big piece is your leadership, um, Brian's leadership. Um, it's the department heads that we have because I've never seen a collective group that is so conservative that looks at how they're purchasing things and they treat it like it's their own money. Um, and that is the philosophy that I definitely embrace and, and love to see. Um, we're, we're, we took a big benefit in 2023, not only from savings, but from investments. Um, as interest rates rise, there's a, a goofy thing that, uh, that we have to report on our financial statements, and that's called market value. And market value, value fluctuates all the time every month as market rates go up and market rates go down. In 2022, market rates were going up. So any investment that you had on the books, as it goes up, your market value on that investment goes down. It's considered an, it, it, it's really an un, um, recognized loss and we have to report it. It's unrecognized because we don't sell any of our investments ahead of time. We take them through maturity. Um, so we never really truly ever have a loss. But it shows up in our financial statements. Last year, we had a market value loss city. These are numbers are citywide of $1.1 million. This year, we have a gain of $580,000. That's a swing from one year to the next of $1.7 million, which is going to show our fund balances in a very, very positive light. In addition, that this city, the city council approved an additional position in the finance department, an accountant. And I think we've got one heck of a great accountant in Mary Kay. Her and I have been able to aggressively this year, aggressively invest. Um, last year in 2022, we had interest income of $624,000. I'm proud to report this year we're at $1.2 million for 2023. That's real dollars um, that we have brought into the city to help our fund balances. Um, so to me, that's fantastic news. So we have risen from 2020 in my three years that I've been here, we've ridden, risen our general fund fund balance from a 36% to $2.8 million to a 50% 
and we're a little over five million right now. Again, there's still some invoices to be paid, the stragglers to come in, but I think we've done a very solid job and it's your leadership that is, has made that um, to be accomplished. And I, I sincerely thank you for all of that. Um, there is a resolution with this budget amendment and I certainly will open to any questions. I just thank you and Mary Kay for your work and um, appreciate you, you know, changing things over in a matter of three years. And for the one you mentioned with the, with the permits and things like that, we've of course changed now. Are we prepared as far as covering, you know, not going through this again the next time a contract comes up? Um, yes, there is a clause in their current contract that will cover it, but I, I still want to have um, our legal um, review that before we bring it um, to City Council because we'll have to do an amendment for that $145,000. we have talked to the, the vendor. If in case our legal says it's not good enough, um, they're open for an amendment um, to that contract. So we would bring all of that on, on uh, we're targeting for the first meeting in March. Um, and. Um, Brian has made it perfectly clear to, clear to us, and we're all in agreement and we, um, that we're not coming forward and telling you that um, we're going to do an amendment for $145,000 and let this ever happen again. Um, so, yes, uh, and we, we will can't be change prepared. the past, but as long as we're yep. going moving forward, forward that, that it does not happen. contract, we have a, a clear yes. way out or a clear be able to change out. Correct. Correct. All right, appreciate that. Anything else? All right. Now we have to do amendment. Pardon me. Approve the resolution. So the budget amendment for the fiscal year 2023 budget. I have a motion. So moved, Your Honor. So moved, Council Member Wong. Second. Second, Council Member Norby. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Nicely done, Dan. Thank you. Yes. The next item that I have. Oh, wait oh a you got to get one. Too You get too soon. Oh. <laughs> oh. Too soon. Um, a part of the 2020, 2020 7th Street reconstruction project was um, that there was a borrowing of MSA dollars. Um, we've mentioned it through our budget process. Um, the project's totally complete. All, all um, bills have been paid. Um, there was a um, allocation of those MSA dollars, and um, it was about $2.8 million that went to the street portion, and about $750,000 went to the storm portion um, to it. Um, that allocation could have been split up differently, but it, it did get city council approval. So to change that allocation requires city council approval, and that's what this item is about. The project is done. Um, we have uh, 100, approximately $132,000 that is still left in the surface water portion of the MSA dollars. We have spent all of the allocation that was for the streets plus more. Um, so what we'd like to do is to transfer um, the money. Um, and so we can clean up that, um, that account um, and make it whole. Um, and so that's really, it's just a more, again, a cleanup item. Um, and what it does is that this is sitting in a separate investment account all by itself that can't allocate its interest to anything else. So this helps, you know, move it into the allocated portion of our interest. And so then all of our funds will share in, 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 in any interest income that um, happens in the future. Okay, that's good. Can Looking for a vote on that resolution. Yep. Can I get a motion for the 2027 Street Reconstruction Project MSA re reallocation? So moved. So moved, Council Member Cole. Second. Second, Council Member Wong. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Thanks again, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Next item is item C, uh, Rams County 2024 McKnight Road Overlay Project. Thanks, Morgan. <laughs> he has to start first. Yeah. Just start with it. <laughs> Turn it over to you, Morgan. 
Thank you, Brian. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, this next item before you here is um, presentation of a project being contemplated by Ramsey County Public Works on McKnight Road, which is a county road between 11th Avenue uh, up to north to city limits with Maplewood at Beam Avenue, and then their project does extend into Maplewood uh, north to County Road D. Um, they have been contemplating uh, lane configuration change uh, through this area as a part of their improvements, which uh, is basically just an overlay of the pavement. Um, but that's the time to kind of consider maybe different configurations for traffic and different things that the roadway might be used for. Um, they are uh, coming here to present uh, the project, a couple different alternatives, and really the council action here for consideration uh, is by resolution parking restrictions, which even though it's a county road, uh, by ordinance and by authority, the city does have the ability to set uh, no parking restrictions or parking allowances up and down the roadway. And so sometimes with these types of situations on a county project, county officials will uh, come to city councils and request um, action on that uh, that may be necessary for them to move forward with uh, one alternative or the other. So the county uh, has conducted a public open house meeting for an invited residents up and down the project area, both from Maplewood and North St. Paul for kind of public comment, public opinion. There's uh, copies of that information in your packet along with some um, graphics, which I'm sharing one version here, and uh, I'm about to turn it over to the county as well here and let them talk through the project. But as an ultimate end action item here, there are uh, resolutions, no parking resolutions, and there's two different versions, and I'll let the county kind of explain those as well too, but uh, at the end of the presentation questions, there will be a resolution, uh, either one or the other, for the council to act on, uh, depending on how you'd like to move forward with the alternatives. So with that, I'm going to introduce Alan Maxwell. So he's an engineer with Ramsey County Public Works. Alan's the project manager for this uh, project effort and uh, he'll provide a brief overview of the project, be available for any questions, and I'm gonna try to drive the graphics here. So hopefully that's showing up on your uh, TV and, and for those uh, at home as well too, so I'll hand it over to Alan. Hey, thanks Morgan, and thank you Council for having the county here to give a little introduction of our project. Uh, certainly let me know if you can hear me, or if you can't hear me at home uh, through the mic, but. Yes, Ramsey County is looking to move forward with our 2024 Mill and Overlay Improvement Project. Uh, McKnight Road from 11th Avenue to Beam Avenue is uh, the portion located in North St. Paul and one part of our overall program that we're looking to take care of this year. So this section of McKnight Road, we are looking to take off the top three inches of pavement and then repave those three inches in order to address all of the cracking and deteriorating road pavement that uh, we see out there today. Um, also included in this work are the storm catch basins, some of which alongside McKnight Road, which are um, worn and show signs of failure. So there will be some work happening on the shoulders as they address the castings of the storm sewer and then a milling and paving operation. Um, part of this Part of this project, since we are removing the pavement, putting it back, we have the opportunity to restripe. And back in 2020, Ramsey County undertook a uh, four to three lane conversion study of roads within uh, the county, which look at taking roads like this that are currently you know, two lanes in either direction, so four lane without a dividing median, and looking at converting those to three lanes. Um, the yeah, uh, MnDOT recognizes that a undivided four-lane road section is the most unsafe intersection configuration in the state of Minnesota uh, due to the amount of conflict points from having both lanes instead of only having to worry about one car in either direction. Um, we're looking to move forward with the safety improvement as part of this project. And so by striping it as three lanes, this is going to provide a seven to eight foot wide shoulder on both sides of McKnight. And so the question before the council is what you would like, what your preference would be for what goes into that shoulder following our project. Um, the Ramsey County Acting Living Team has identified a need for bike lanes within this segment of McKnight Road, uh, which would extend over the I-69 
or I-694 bridge to the north in Maplewood, uh, connecting parks and um, access to the church and the schools all the way down through the corridor to 13th Avenue. And so um, we would be looking at an alternative in which we have designated bike lanes all the way throughout the Maplewood and North St. Paul section through, the co through that corridor. Alternatively, during our community engagement process, we receive mixed feedback to the bike lanes and the loss of the existing parking along Mohawk Road to Beam Avenue. And having conducted a parking survey and evaluated the design, uh, county is open to an alternative uh, section in which we uh, leave an eight foot shoulder on either side of the road and do not specify that it is a bike lane. Um, this option would allow us to maintain the existing no parking signs, but we would be looking for a resolution from the council to uh, include no parking signs where there is currently no parking today uh, in an effort to align with our all abilities and multimodal policy within the county. Um, so you mentioned the right turn lane. Yes, uh, thank you for that, Morgan. Um, one point to mention at 17th Street and McKnight is that there's currently a uh, right turn only lane as uh, for us for one section of the road the right lane drops off and becomes a right turn lane and then you have a one lane for us for a time that goes back to being a two lane we're looking to clean all that up with one segment throughout and so we did cre we did obtain traffic counts at 17th and McKnight to evaluate the loss of that right turn lane and what it would mean for traffic and while losing the right turn lane does affect the you know right turning traffic the um, installation of the designated left turn lane is moving the left turners out of the through lane so that they are able to make to wait to take their turns um, and not impede traffic so um, taken as a whole our county engineer has uh, our county traffic engineer has evaluated this um, this impact and as determined that the intersection is still going to be functional without the use of the designated right turn lane. So our, we would propose continuing the section through 17th as the three lane section that um, Morgan is showing you. And maybe if, if you want to go back and I can talk through sections as a whole here, Morgan. Um, when we're talking about the intersection of 11th and McKnight, we're not proposing any changes there. We show that that's going to be part of our mill and oat an overlay to update the pavement section, but the three 12 lane sections on the top of your screen and the two on the bottom of your screen, uh, that is similar to what is there today. And then from 11th Street through to 13th Street, we are transitioning down to our one lane section so that by 13th Avenue, you are um, in our three lane section in earnest. And then this is what we would propose keeping the um, Eight foot shoulders are shown in the example on the screen and are highlighted in red to indicate where we, those would go. So we would be looking at a resolution from no parking from 13th to Mohawk. Yeah. Thanks for man in the screen. So yeah, here you see the intersection with 17th and McKnight and uh, what we propose for putting back. The striped crosswalks are in the same locations as exist today, um, save one throughout the project limits that's being moved from 16th to 15th, I believe, um, from a three lane or from a T intersection to a four way intersection. And then once we get north of Mohawk, this is the section of road where parking currently exists today. And so we would simply not install no parking signs there um, if that would be the county, the city's preference. And then that would continue all the way up to Beam Avenue and the limits of North St. Paul. Yep. 
Looking at the bike lane version, it's the same configuration from 11th to 13th. We're looking to keep the intersection the same and then slowly transition out until you get to 13th Street. The areas of no parking would remain the same up until Mohawk, and then we would just carry that forward. Uh, the, notable, the notable change here is that um, we would provide a seven foot bike lane as is typical instead of the eight foot shoulder and those extra two feet are being put into the center turn lane themselves, changing it from a 10 foot center turn lane to a 12 foot. And notably from the condition that exists today, the travel lanes are being narrowed down to 11 feet instead of uh, a variable 12 feet to 11 feet or 12 feet to 13 feet. And we've seen, um, we've seen reduction in speeds at the county from adopting an 11 foot section. This is typical of what we would install on our projects um, in recent history. And notably, as this continues into the Maplewood section, Maplewood would be looking at a similar um, no parking and bike lane installation option for their road segment. Yes, we did conduct a parking study for this section of existing parking and found that um, we averaged between two to five vehicles throughout the project limits, Maplewood included, that um, utilized parking. And seeing as that is underutilized in the condition that it's in today, um, that is helping us with our alternative to adopt a multi-use shoulder in this, uh, in this alternative. Um, because we're still allowing the access that we're looking for, for the most part, save a car every now and again. I, I think at that point, if, you, if the council had any additional questions, I sure would be happy to answer them. Or any clarifications needed between the options. Otherwise, I believe that Morgan has presented the um, the resolutions that we would be to looking for one or the other, either um, adopting an eight foot shoulder or the seven foot bike lane to take up that space that the three lane uh, conversion is gonna provide. I have a question. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I'm wondering what um, type of bike lane is being proposed. I know it's seven feet, but there are also different uh, ways in doing that, um, whether it's painted green um, to give more visibility so it's safer, stuff like that. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we found that um, striping a white, our white shoulder stripe at seven feet with um, white bike symbols throughout is the section that we would be proposing. As you get wider than that, um, there, there is the temptation for drivers to treat it as a driving lane. And so when you get larger than seven feet, that's when we would begin looking at options like uh, painting a bike buffer. Um, but for this case, that's, um, that isn't, um, isn't what we would pursue. The narrowest that we get in this road section is 48 feet. And so that's uh, two 11 foot lanes for 22 the center lane for 12, taking us to 34, and then two seven-foot bike lanes for 48. And so since, since that's restricting us at the narrowest point, that's what we would like to um, propagate throughout the limits. When you get further north on the intersection and into Maplewood, we do widen out to over 50 feet in a section, and then we are looking at those bike buffer alternatives. Thank you. Any other questions, anyone? Sorry. Where's it go? Oh, it's just up. Are we ready for discussion? Mm hmm Okay. See if there's any more questions. Um, I don't think I have any more questions for um, the county engineer. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I'm a proponent. I, I, I like the bike lanes. I think it feels a lot safer. Um, biking on McKnight. I think that um, 
it's an opportunity for us um, to provide that safe route. Um, and we know that at the end of McKnight, um, there's also access to the Gateway Trail on the other end too. So I think it would just be helpful to have something that is clear, um, and clearly marked. Um, as we know, people speed on McKnight. I guess while I have you here, I do have one more question, if you don't mind. Um, th this project, the ultimate end goal is South Shore, or how far are you going? South Shore, for now, we're looking to, we're looking to impact between 11th to, between 11th and Beam. We recognize that Highway 36 exists where it exists, and that there's um, more desire for two lanes in that section, and so we're not looking to carry it further any south at this time. Okay. North towards White Bear Lake after you cross over McKnight. North on? After you cross over in 694, I meant on McKnight, all the way up. North of 694, the road narrows again, mm -hmm. and what exists there today are uh, one lane in either direction with shoulders on the side. And so when you get to the bridge on, on 694 itself, there is a, similar to 17th, a lane that drops off as a designated right turn lane to go to, um, access, to access to business over on that side. And so by striping it all the way north of 694, then we would naturally transition from the, um, from the bike lanes to the existing shoulder section that people are utilizing. So are they going to change on the other side uh, by the golf course on the other side of 694? Are they going to make no parking and make a bike lane all the way to White Bear Lake, or is it just going to stay parking the way it is now? Um, that's outside of the scope of this project. Okay. Actually. I was just wondering if this is if there's a game plan to get all the way to White Bear Lake from, from here on McKnight. So that was my question, if they were going to do bike lane continuous. I can share that our, our active living council has – shared that there was the identified need at 694, which is what led it to be included in this project. They may have other identified needs that go further north. Certainly the possibility for connecting is you know, agreeable to all parties involved, but um, I couldn't speak to that. At this okay, point. thank you. Anybody else have any opinions? My only concern is going from. Oh, I thought it was on. My apologies. Maybe I turned myself off. Mm -hmm. um, the section between 11th and 17th is still heavily traveled. It's four lanes. It's two lanes each direction. Um, in recognizing that northbound at 17th, the right lane dead ends into a right hand turn. You had referenced that you'd done some some studies. Um, that's a big backup intersection going north. Um, how is this going to solve or resolve the backup that comes all the way down to at least 15th, if not further down the hill, during, um, during high traffic time? Well, that is an excellent question, and that's certainly something that uh, Ramsey County had looked into back in 2020 when we did our, um, our evaluation of possible road segments and within the county that would qualify for a four to three lane conversion like this. The ideal amount of traffic that we're looking at for one of these conversions is a, a daily traffic load of between 8,500 and 24,000. And at the time of the study, which was pre, you know, COVID traffic numbers, um, McKnight was sitting at about 12,000. It's right in the range that we're looking for for this. And so we recognize that by, by saying we're looking to go from four lanes to three lanes, three is less than four and so that has the perception that we're losing something but if you think about the use of the road when somebody is looking to turn left then they're waiting for two lanes of traffic to create an opening for them to turn left and if you're stuck behind that person then you're looking to get over into the other lane and may make sudden mergers to try and get around where the block is and that follows all the way further further down the line and similarly um at least up in the Maplewood section, there are bus stops, but you also get mail delivery and 
people picking up and dropping off at houses where on the right mm -hmm. lane that can equally slow down and look for people to go across. Mm -hmm. the, um, the way that the three lane section handles that is that by having a designated center left turn lane, if you're looking to slow down to turn, you're getting out of the way so that the traffic can remain moving forward. And for the shoulder that this is gonna create, eight or seven feet um, is a wide enough section that your car can pull off into it if there's an emergency or if you're looking to drop somebody off or if you're looking to deliver mail and keep the center lane moving forward. So recognizing that there are uh, um, stop signs along the corridor, um, it's within the bounds of what we've studied to show that it, there's an acceptable level of traffic for a project such as this. I just see a lot of traffic turn left prior to the intersection to avoid the intersection. Um, so I just, I, I have concerns going to, you know, narrow, taking it from four lanes down to three, two plus one. Mm -hmm. We recognize that. Up to that point. Well, certainly thank you for sharing that with us. Um, it, it's something that we hear on a lot of our four to three lane conversion projects. And um, that's why we do take the level of effort that we do to evaluate each road because every road in the county, like every road in the city is different. But uh, this did come away with one of the more positive results of that study as being appropriate for a project such as this. I know when I take that home, I'm always the right lane because I'm turning right towards Silver Lake and, you know, it's, it's very quick and the other lane is, is over there. When you do your study, does it just the number of intersections, does it count how many people are going which direction, left and right, or is it just count cars by, uh, you know, bumps going over? How does, it, how does it do your study as far as that intersection? Uh, MnDOT does drive all of the roads and gather the average amount of daily traffic on the roads and that's available on their website and so that's one measure for when you're looking preliminarily at something like this and scoping out how it's going to work but then for intersections like 17th and McKnight we did um, go out and put up cameras to um, record during peak hours how many cars are actually going through. So they looked how many turn left, how many right then? Yeah, that's my question was it how is it more people going towards the west or the east when they're turning, so. Offhand, I don't know that I could say, but I know that, that those traffic counts have been provided to Morgan. They may be yeah. part of the council packet. Um, and of course that left lane to return is it gonna be a you know, everybody's going to be in that lane. So the middle lane, people going straight aren't going to have to wait for the left turns like they are right now. Right. That's you got to wait to turn right now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now I'm stuck. Now you're stuck. All right. We got to talk about this again. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I'm waiting to see if there anybody has any more comments before, because I don't want to interrupt anybody, but I don't want to slow the show either. We good? So now, what do we, we got two things in front of us? Yeah, so Mr. Mayor, there's uh, two resolutions in your packet. So the first one um, would be for the multi-use shoulder option, uh, which retains parking, on-street parking between Mohawk and 17th. And so that first resolution uh, in terms of the now therefore be it resolved prohibits parking of motor vehicles on McKnight Road on both sides of the road between 13th and Mohawk only. The second resolution would be in support of the full bike lane option all the way through and that prohibits parking of motor vehicles along McKnight Road on both sides between 13th all the way to the city limits at Beam Avenue. So those are the two options in order. So now Do we vote on both. That's what I'm saying. If we vote on the one, no. the other one goes. So it'd be a, a first vote, motion, and yes. second to f to vote on one or the other. I'm gonna. So do I ask for a motion on the first one first, or how does that? I never had a two of them like this in a row, so I'm trying to figure it out. You don't have to vote on both. You don't have no, to I don't vote. vote. I, how do we get it? 
get it cooking to figure out which one we're going to do. So a motion and second to vote on one or the other, and then you can take that vote. Okay. Um, could also be further discussion if there's a consensus reached among council on which one you would prefer. You could then bring that one forwards and vote on that. We can just do a consensus right now. I can say for consensus for the first one that has parking on there, you know, what's yeah, so everything. Discussion among council yep. to try and reach a consensus on which option is preferred and then vote on that resolution. Does that make more sense? To have more discussion. There's a mud. Okay. So for the first one, which has the, the way the parking now is not the bike lane, the full bike lane, but parking in the middle. Does anybody? That's why I want. I don't want to discourage the group home and I believe taking the way the parking from the group home would be detrimental to it so I'm in favor of the first one the the multi-use that still allows some parking okay that's where my head goes as well the mixed mixed use lane it doesn't sound like there's a lot of cars that are parked there but there are one or two spots where the parking is needed yeah, I think my concern there is kind of um, it, in the like the feedback um, when they're referring to the group home. It said that vans were coming in and just dropping off and coming and leaving. So I don't know if that's you know um, many cars or is it more like they come and go kind of situation. Um, that's how I interpreted it when I read it. My preference is the multi, to be able to use them both. Cassidy, that's the majority right there. <laughs> What's your thought? I like the idea of a bike path, but I would also be a really irritated uh, homeowner if I didn't have parking. So um, if I lived on that street, I'd want to make sure I had parking. I think that's why I asked if it was a, um, if there are single family homes, because um, most of them, or if not all of them, will have driveways so to me it's like well the bike lane is for the public benefit whereas this parking only benefits a few uh, residents from time to time and that and not always so that's kind of the trade-off that I see all right should we go vote on the the first one then for the first motion, which is multi-use, can I get uh, somebody to bring that motion? Tim, so moved. So move. Council Member Cole. I'm looking to my, I'm looking down to my left, and nobody's leaning in. <laughs> Second. Second. Council Member Norby. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Nay. Nay. Okay. Cheers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Thank you. Yes, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming. Do we have to officially vote on the other one? No. Too? Okay. He said he would have good. Thank you. Appreciate the patience, and we learned something new again today. All right, next item up, item D, is the update uh, purchase of the 2024 Mack plow truck. Um, Thank you. I, I pulled um, this item for one simple reason. Um, uh, I'm absolutely in for voting in favor, but I view this as a possible opportunity to for the city to um, help our plow truck drivers stay safe out there. Um, they do a, a very, very hard job, a very difficult job. Um, a lot of the other cities, um, when they're purchasing new trucks, are adopting like name a plow truck or, or um, some way where they can engage their community in some um, uh, proactive safety measures. And I just thought the purchase of a new truck might be a good way for North St. Paul to kick off some safety measures around plowing as well. Um, 
So that was why I pulled it. Not, not because I don't want to purchase truck, just I see this as an opportunity for the city to um, implement some safety and, and learning measures um, for our residents. Okay. Do you want to come name your truck? <laughs> <laughs> come on. <laughs> I'll just say from the open house, um, you know, uh, for the commissioners, and we were able to go through um, and see all the buildings and uh, or all the vehicles and um, really have a good conversation um, with Randy and and um, what's your name, <laughs> Ron? And so um, I think that was a really educational opportunity and I learned a lot and um, I think that was very valuable. Very nice. So we just have to move a motion. So would it what? be appropriate okay. and help me out if I propose to add a friendly amendment to the city to explore ideas to promote safety around this new purchase? and then move to approve it with that friendly amendment? Is that the right way to do that? Um, I think the, the exploring public safety options, I think can just be done as direction to staff. If there's council consensus, I don't think that needs to be included in um, any formal action right now. And then that would be brought back um, at a future council meeting or work session. Thank you. So, so moved with no friendly amendment. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I have a second. second with second. no friendly amendment. Well, there we go. Council Member Cole, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. I want a seat in that truck. <laughs> we got to get snow. Speaking of naming things, I had a resident walk by our place and she asked if there's a, if there's a name for the snowman. It's Kenny. Huh? The name of the snowman is Kenny. Really? Yes. All right. Well, I hope they're watching. I told them I'd try to find out. I had no idea it was a name for the snowman. So Where did you, that come from? Where that? Ah, that you, your dad, I went was involved in quite a bit with that. Where so that I don't you know where Is that the guy's name who made it, designed it? No, no. it is not. Where did it come You're just going to keep it to yourself I or what? I challenged that by calling Sue Springborn. No. Yeah. <laughs> Phone a friend. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Sorry to interrupt, but I f didn't want to forget that. I told her, I said, I don't know, but I'll ask. Kenny, it is. Yeah, that's right. For tonight. For tonight. Yeah, exactly. Sue has her ass, sorry. All right. You can have name a snowman, too. Mm hmm All right. Next up, uh, reports from city manager and departments. Um, met today with staff. Uh, fire's been having training done um, for code enforcement, along with other things. Um, They've turned in their letter of intent for replacing the engine for the fire truck, so they're getting that process moving forward. Public Works has been working on um, the EAB uh, trees with a grant that they got. It's a $400,000 grant, $100,000 of that will be available to low income for the public for them to get access to it. They're putting together an application process for that right now, so that will be released soon. With the nice weather, they've been uh, able to get some more trees taken care of early this year, which is good. Um, they usually try to do what, about 125 of them a year, and um, now they'll be able to do more, but uh, now with getting a contractor in here and helping out with that process, that'll work well. Uh, they've been doing maintenance um, on well five. I think they've completed that. Pulled all or pulled all out right now, gotcha. Um, you bumping my hand till it happens? <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay, good. <clears throat> Uh, Lecture department's also been doing some lighting work in some of the wells, um, also the public works building. Um, had some, uh, we won't even get into the Vector truck. Uh, uh, Carrie's getting ready to uh, start planning the city garage sales. We're getting the signs ready to order for that coming up uh, May 2nd through the 4th. Um, finance was having the auditors back. Uh, Monday through Wednesday, and then they'll be back for the final time for the first week in March to finish up the audit. Uh, SPD about the LexisNexis program, the records management program. Um, they found that there were software issues of communication, communication between our system and um, Ramsey County. They also found a neighboring community that was having some issues, so we got IT involved, and they're working on that communication to get that up and running. 
<clears throat> um, like he said, that the, they have their two new officers on staff now, so they are at full staff. Um, March 7th will be coming up. They'll be having a swearing-in ceremony as well as their annual awards. So that'll be nice. Very nice. Um, community development, we're still working on the onboarding of Rum River. That's going well. Um, getting the RFP packed together for the park design concept. Um, Electric's been, uh, just got some people back from Transformer School down in Marshall. Uh, like I said, they're working on lighting upgrades in the buildings, uh, working on job planning and prep for the 2024 season once the warmer weather starts. And that's all I have for now. Okay. Thank you very much. Reports for council commissions and committees. Councilman Norby. The Planning Commission uh, meeting in February was canceled due to no action items. The next Planning Commission meeting will be on March 7th. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Council Member Wong. Yeah, I just want to acknowledge that we were able to identify two um, uh, new commissioners and thank you for voting them in on the consent agenda. Um, we also had a third, um, so we're hoping that they'll be able to join us in a student capacity. Um, but we're really excited. I think um, our candidates or our, com our new commissioners have a lot to offer so and a lot of connections to um, artists. So looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, and their next meeting is uh, tomorrow yeah. here at 630. Thank you. I appreciate being able to be a part of the the group and be able to do that. Councilmember Schwer. Uh, Parks and Rec was canceled this in January due to both of our chair and vice chair out. The next meeting will be in here on the 28th at 6.30. Thank you very much. Councilmember Cole. Uh, the last DDA meeting was canceled due to uh, lack of a quorum and we will not be having a meeting this month. Okay. Thank you. All right, general business. Um, I had the wonderful opportunity to attend the 120 um, redevelopment um, section on a week ago today. Um, there was two new plans and a bunch of intersection changes put out. I've had um, several residents reach out to me and I am trying to work with WSB to find out if they are online. Um, and to those residents that have reached out, I will contact you as soon as I know more. Um, and also, I invite everyone to come, I believe, see everyone on Tuesday the 27th at the Historical Society. Yeah. Yes, good reminder. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to say that the fireman appreci firefighter appreciation dinner um, went really well, and um, just a big thank you to them and all the work that they do um, helping out our city and responding to um, all sorts of situations, including dogs in water. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. Thank you. I too had the pleasure of attending that event. Uh, it was a very nice recognition. Other than that, um, I'll see you all on the 27th at the historical. Yeah, great reminder. Uh, welcome back. You were duly missed. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you for entrusting me with your shoes um, uh, and the car keys. I didn't crash the car. Oh, good. Uh, I Lisa, wonder why the coordinated car was running around town. <laughs> Council Member Wong did a phenomenal job last year, so thank you yep. for entrusting me with the keys this year. Thank you. Uh, a lot, it was a busy three weeks, a lot of city activities. Um, February 22nd, or sorry, 23rd and 24th was the open house. Um, several of us were present for, for both of which. Um, I think Council Member Wong has a new position in the electric department now, being able to exchange whatever the heck those things are up on the long top poles. Yeah, Insulators, what are they what called? Uh, nice. <laughs> what is it? Fuses. Fuses, Fuses. Fuses. insulators, it's yeah. 120, 121. <laughs> so uh, just big shout out to, to everyone for the time, energy, and effort put forth 
um, to, to put something together for, for council and the uh, commissions and committees to be able to come in and, uh, and tour public works uh, as well as come in here and the police garage and look for contraband hidden in cars and, and other things as well. So um, phenomenal night. Uh, just wish that uh, um, Mr. Winnick was passing out real $100,000 bills, not $100,000 <laughs> bars, but appreciate that. Um, January 26th was the uh, Fire Department Appreciation Dinner. I also had the opportunity to attend that. Thank you for all. Um, I am February 2nd. Uh, I attended the Minnesota Mayor's event. Um, and I just want to thank you, for, thank, uh, thank you for the opportunity to attend that for that inf information along. Um, it was great to meet all the other mayors from, from around the community and talk about common themes, common problems, common projects. Um, so it was, it was exciting. I tried to deputize a posse while you were gone. <laughs> I tried to put a proclamation out while you were gone. I got shot down by everybody. I know. I thought there'd be a Tim Cole day when I showed up, but no, no, there wasn't. That's every day. That's every day. Ah, at least I know now. You can't leave anymore this year. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking over and filling in. I appreciate your, your hard work on that. And uh, you could tell by looking at me a Norwegian with a little color. So I was gone for a little while. Now I look like uh, the extra crispy Colonel from Colonel Sanders. So, but it was enjoyable. It was an enjoyable trip. And I thank everybody that uh, pitched in. And I really felt sad that I missed, uh, missed the fun open houses. And uh, so I thank everybody. Thank you very much. Can I get a motion to close, please? So moved. So move, Council Member Norby. Second. Second, Council Member Wong. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you all. Have a great night. Appreciate it.